Hi everyone, happy Saturday, and uh, we're going to do a flight today to Phoenix. So we are currently in uh, Las Vegas, where we uh, where we stopped uh, last uh, weekend, and we're going to do a flight today. The weather looks uh, quite nice. I wish it were as nice here in Canada, but uh, can't win them all. So with that, we are going to uh, get started. We're currently uh, parked in the Charlie, uh, Charlie-like gate area of McCarran International Airport. We got our flight plan, which looks ready to go, so we're going to start. Should be about an hour or so flight, and it's, uh, I've flown into Phoenix a lot. It's a fun little, fun little flight to do, so we're going to jump into the aircraft. We're in the uh, Zeebo uh, 737-800 mod, which uh, if you like the 737 and you're using the default, please stop. <laughs> please stop and go to the... Uh, to the um, Zebo mod because it's free and it's it's perhaps the best study aircraft that we have, uh, short of you know something like PMDG, which X-Plane doesn't have yet. So hopefully uh, we get that. All right, let's get some power going on in here because it's dark and cold. Okay, so we're gonna put some power going. Turn those off. I don't know why those start on. Emergency lights to on and align the IRS. Go and Zebo tablet ground services connect GPU and then turn the GPU on. There we go, we're good. Okay. Oh, let's get some let's get some light going on in here, I guess. It's dark. Cause I like to be able to see, you know, when I'm you know doing stuff. I guess because the sun's, like, above me, that's why there's no light. <laughs> okay. There we go. More light. can see things now. All right, we're going to go into the FMC, and we're going to get some information going on in there. K-L-A-S. Next page. Previous page. And we're good. IRS is aligned. You can set that to real time or to like medium time. Um, the full like align time I think is like seven or eight minutes and I really don't want to just sit here for 11 minutes. <laughs> so that's why I have it set to fast. What gate are we on? Um, C16. All right. Let's see here. Okay, C16. Route. We are going to Phoenix. Now the runway they gave us. Uh, we're departing two six right, and we are arriving on eight. Okay. Six right. X and our flight is always one seven five because that's my call sign. Let's see here. Performance. Okay, so we gotta get the we gotta get the fuel in the aircraft first. So it says here twelve thousand four oh nine is our fuel load. Okay, so divided by two plus thirty. Okay. So our fuel actually I should check our uh, our payload as well so that we have that. Payload is 39.3, so we're pretty full today. Okay, so weight, fuel, and balance. I don't know why X-Plane always like randomly adds fuel, but it does, and it, it upsets me. I wish it just wouldn't do that. So, 5, 7, 3, 5, 1,000, and then 5, 7, 0, 0. Excellent. Apply changes. Oh god, it shut off. It's okay. Connect GPU and GPU on again. There we go. We're good. We're good. It's okay. The beer is still cold. We're all good. Okay.
back to the FMC. So cost index is 25, reserves are going to be 1. Our zero fuel weight is 131. Yep, so that's good. What's our altitude going to be? 35,000, flying high. I guess that would make sense because we have to go over mountains. Okay, so let's get our cruise win now. <clears throat> One five four at nine. Wow, light wind speed today. I like that. And the ice dev is plus three. Top of climb OAT minus 52, yeah, so that's good. The uh, information that I get for this is from simbrief.com. You can create a free account and uh, you can basically, it's really easy to, to figure out how to put stuff in. And then uh, this is where I get all my flight information from, simbrief.com. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and hit execute. And, uh, and one limit. What's the temperature in Vegas today? 21 degrees Celsius. Take off. Flaps are going to be 5. Trim is 4.82. So let's set the trim. Which, because these are whole integers, we don't really need to go far. There we go. Okay. V speeds. So I'm going to write that down. So, 36, 138, and 146. Okay. Uh, so that is good. So we're going to go to departure, and I believe our departure that it gave us was cowboy. Cowboy, cowboy, eight tenths with the bruiser. Okay, cool. I've done this before. Uh... I think the transition is DRK, even though I've done this before. <laughs> okay, we're going to go to the SID for the cowboy. If it'll load. Okay, so... So at Navo, and then Drake is below. Yeah, that would, that would make sense, because Phoenix is south, so we're going to use the Drake one. Okay, then we go to route, and we go to activate. Unable cruise alt, that always happens. Okay, back to departure, we're going to go to arrival now. And we're doing the bruiser one with the tense transition, and they gave us the runway of eight. Alice, I always remember this one, this is always like... It's always funny, you have to, uh... You have to, like, I think the, like, initial... So... ALLIS is the initial fix for the uh, final approach, and I think that it always has like it's always like it's got a weird turn. So when we look at the the waypoints, we'll we'll take a look at that. Okay, let's get the flight plan up and take a look. Okay, so now we're gonna make sure that the flight path actually you know will work. So to do that. Just do it like this. We're going to go to the EFIS panel, and we're going to set it to plan, and we're going to set it to 20, and then we're going to zoom in here, and we're going to make sure that this works. Okay, so, um, okay, so Rebel, Roper, Caesar, hit me, uh, Cowboy, top of climb. Does it show that waypoint there? Just doesn't. It just says, "Huh, that's kind of interesting." It's just cowboy and then direct to tents. So we don't even need to use DRK, I guess. It's not a bad thing. Cowboy, yeah. So this right here is a really good example. <clears throat> um, I guess the flight plan didn't give me DRK, so that's that's why. But right now we have our flight plan. So DRK, um, that was uh, the transition that we chose. And what happens with that sometimes is 
you you the, the flight path will do this. So it'll go like down or it'll go around or something like that. And then the next waypoint will be up here. So you basically are doing this, which is stupid. So because of that, we are just going to clear all this crap out and go to tents. And then as you can see, there's a, um, a line there that's saying, you know, do you want to do this? We hit execute. And then if I go to previous page and do this again, cowboy tents. Yeah, perfect. Because that's what it shows. Simbrief has like a map that it gives you for the waypoints. And so now it, it flows exactly like that. Okay, so uh, tents, uh, panned, duty, mayor, bruiser. Got to zoom in over here. Isa, pigskin, Tillman. So yeah, this is the kind of funny thing I was talking about here. Is we have uh, we have the the uh, you know PG SKN, and then we have waypoints all the way over there. <laughs> so that is a problem. So I'm going to look at the. Does it give a vector waypoint after this, I wonder? If it gives a vector waypoint, we should be okay. Tillman Jamal vector, okay. Tillman Jamal vector. Huh. Does it want us to go all the way around? I know I said I did Bruiser, and I guess that it's been a while since I've <laughs> done this Type 1, so that was my bad there. Well, I have coffee, so at least if I have to think, I'm going to be jacked up on it. Let's take a look here. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to look at the approach then and see what the hell is going on. Because, yeah, that's kind of weird. Okay, Phoenix. Uh, okay, the approach of runway 8. Okay, so... Jamil is one of the approach ones. Pigskin to A. Okay, so we're going to change this because this is not right. Um, satire, because you have Jamil. Jamil is in there, and then if we go to the next page here, it shows Jamil again. So it's it's got a double waypoint there. So uh, this, is, this is okay. We can fix this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the uh, star chart for this, for the Bruiser 1. Okay, so Pigskin, and then Tillman, and then at Tillman, you can decide where you want to go. Okay. So Pigskin, and then Tillman, but Tillman isn't a necessary waypoint, so I'm going to just take the vector one, and I'm going to put it uh, at where Tillman would be, and see what that does. Is it before that? Pigskin. Okay. Um, you know what to hell with this. I'm just going to vector myself when I get to pigskin. So we are wanting to do a list and what is the final track for that um, approach so it's a 078 track for the approach so you know what, I'm just gonna do a like 265 265 approach course once I get to that so at PG skin uh, 265 degrees and then I'm going to go direct a list because that's, or ALS or whatever, however you say it, because this is, yeah, funky. And then, yeah, and then we're fine for that. So that's okay. All right.
put this back to plan and take it back to uh, 10. Okay. So let's get, so the, the routing is done, so that's good. So let's go ahead and get some stuff set up on this. So uh, 2, 6, right. We've got to go back to... Um, got to go back to KLAS. Okay, so the runway... Okay, there it's loading. I'm not used to the new Navigraph uh, charts app. I have the old version on my computer. Okay, so 259 degrees is our, our heading to get out of here. So what we're doing right now is we're uh, we're updating the MCP or the mode control panel so that we can have all of our settings and stuff to be where we want them to be. There is um, in the actual Zebo tablet, which is the device where I connected the GPU, there is a uh, like a checklist that's step by step that you can do uh, if you're if you're starting out with this, and that should be fine. How I generally do it is I do uh, you know I do power to the aircraft get the FMC done, get the routing done for your departure and arrival, do the uh, MCP, check the rest of the aircraft, APU, and then push. So, 146. Yeah, 146 was our, our rotate speed. Oop, didn't mean to do that. Okay. Flight director's on. Auto throttle on. And that's set to 30 degrees, so that's good. Now, there is, Roper has an altitude restriction. Okay, so departing runway uh, Rebel, then to Roper. So above 5, below 7, and then above 8 after that. So we have to be below 7,000. Seven. Okay. Uh, we're going to put auto brakes to RTO. We're going to set the... It's kind of hard to see here, but you can set your, your speed reference thing. So that's really important to do. So you put that to uh, V1, and then you'll see on the nav display, uh, or sorry, the PFD over here, it says V100. So yeah, we can put the speed in for that. And it was one 136. Okay. And then V2, 138. And then set. Okay, that's good. Okay. So we're going to set the uh, EFIS panel now, which was this guy over here. Okay, so we have it set to what we want for that. We're going to put weather on. I'm going to check what the altimeter is for pressurization. Three zero one five. So we change this to three zero one five, and then we want to set the decision height as well. Uh, and I'm fairly certain that it is fairly certain that it is um, two hundred. Most of them are two hundred. Approach for runway zero eight. Oh, 250. Okay, fair enough. So we're going to set the radio here, as you can see that moving to 250. And what the radio uh, essentially is for this is if you've ever, um, if you've ever heard in, uh, I can't see why you'd, <laughs> unless you're a pilot, I can't see why you'd know this uh, in real life, but unless you've ever watched a video and you've heard it say uh, approaching minimums and then minimums, uh, this is what that's that's for. This basically lets you know that you're approaching your minimum, uh, which is your decision height. So that's kind of where you decide to either continue the approach or throw the approach away. Okay, so that is all set. So what we're going to do now is we're going to test uh, ground proximity and TCAS. So over here, right here is what we're going to test it. There's two different tests we have to do.
Yeah. Seven thirty sevens don't do barrel rolls, in case you were wondering. <laughs> Okay, good. And if I click it again quickly, does that do it? Uh, or does it do it all again? Maybe he might have put the two together. Oh yeah, there was two. Okay, cool. Okay, so that's good. So now we're gonna test our TCAS. Good. I was like to just check this real quick. Okay, we're good. All right. So testing is done. So we really only have to do a few more little things. So right now I'm going to go ahead and start the APU just so we can burn a little bit of that. Uh, so let's turn on yaw dampers, turn on window heat, turn on trim air. Uh, turn on hydraulics as we're going to need those. Uh, we want to get our pressurization set. Uh, so I believe it said we are flying at 35,000. Yeah. And then to find out the, uh, the height of the field that you're landing at, if you go to your FMC and you go to your legs page right here and you go to the last page for that, it will say what the runway is, so it's 1168. So that right there tells us that that's the altitude we're going to be landing at. So 1150 is obviously the closest one. Uh, okay, I think we are good for everything else here. So we can go ahead and start the APU. So we're going to turn the first fuel pump on, and then we're going to start the APU. 1 1000, 2 1000, 3 1000. The uh, exhaust temperature gauge uh, right next to the to the um, fuel pumps here will shoot up in a second and then we'll wait for it to stabilize and then turn it on. There we go. Okay, so while that's getting started, I'm just going to look at our taxi. Okay, so we are at Charlie right now. So we're going to do Charlie. Uh, we're going to taxi Charlie Bravo 1. Pretty easy. Pretty easy taxi. It's just a straight line across the gate. So Charlie Bravo 1. Okay. Okay, so the APU is stabilized, so we'll turn it on now. And then we will turn on the APU bleed. And we will turn off ground power. Yeah, if I go to the tablet, I think it's already off. Disconnect, that's fine. So, okay, back to the overhead power. So the APU is on. So we have a little bit of time where we can just kind of let that that run. The reason, the reason why you have to do ground power APU engines is because the ground power unit is connected to the aircraft. And when you're pushing back, you like the cable's not super long, so it would break off aircraft would shut off. So we do APU so that you can have the auxiliary power unit running uh, while you're 
backing on the airfield and then starting your engines up. So that is good. Um, everything else is kind of good. We can turn on power so people can charge their uh, iPads and whatnot. Okay, so everything else looks decent here. We'll get the flaps going. And then from here, I'm going to, let me see here, click progress so we know where we are. We'll start the pushback plan. I don't think we need to go that far, personally. That is quite loud. I'm going to go ahead and change that. Start the pushback for that. Close the door. Turn the anti-collision light on. That's done. And we will wait for the tug to show up and then we'll be kind of ready to go. Everything else looks good. I'll set my TCAS to alt on. Even though we're not flying on a network like Pilot Edge or VATSIM, um, I still try and follow all of the procedures that I can. So I, I have an active um, squawk code in my um, in my transponder and stuff like that. Okay. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. Let's take a look outside, see what he's doing. Oh, hey, there he is. It's funny, those things actually like lift the aircraft up and push it back. Probably going to be done in just a Okay. So let's go ahead and turn our TCAS to, um, to runway. Do a quick check up here. Uh, is everything okay? Okay, we're going to put the on. We'll put the wing one on. Trim air is on. Everything else looks good here. We're going to put our seatbelts on. And I think we're ready to go. Okay, so we're going to release the parking brake. Starting for test, and you may start engines. As the bridge pulls away. <laughs> all right, let's start the engines here. So we're going to go to turn all of our fuel pumps on, and then we're going to turn uh, ignition to ground. We're going to wait for uh, N2 here to reach 25, and then we're going to put the uh, engines to that engine to idle. Actually, while that's doing that, I'll set up the EFIS panel over here. 40 and weather. Twenty-five. K okay, engine one to idle. We're going to wait for this one to click off, and then. Silly scenery. What are you doing? Just park the friggin' fuel truck right in the backing up of an aircraft. Okay, that's off. We're going to do it to engine 2 now. Same procedure as before. We're just going to wait for that N2 to fire. It is good. Then we're going to wait for that to click off, and then we'll put the uh, switch to engine power by turning the engine buses on. Okay, good. So we are going to now put the engines on. So. 
engine power on, set to continuous. Uh, we're going to put the probe heat on. We're going to turn the APU off. We're going to wait for that to get to uh, zero. And then we are going to turn the APU bleed off and turn the packs on so we don't die of suffocation uh, while we're at cruise altitude. This thing is like taking its sweet ass time. I guess we're getting there. The heck? <laughs> what are you doing? This is kind of strange. Is he pushing it forward or... Okay, he is stopping. All right. That's kind of funny. What the hell is this guy doing? The tug better release me, otherwise I'm flying with the tug on. Okay, that was kind of weird. <laughs> okay, APU is off, so we're going to turn APU bleed on. Uh, we're going to turn the packs to auto, and we're going to turn the isolation valve to auto uh, so that we are good. We're going to turn the wing light off. And as soon as he gets out of the way, we'll turn our taxi lights on and we'll be gone. Disconnect. Some um, better pushback, by the way, if you're looking for that add-on. Really great to use. Much better than the default one. The default one doesn't really give you uh, settings or parameters to like where you want to go. It's just like, would you like to turn left or would you like to turn right? So, hand signal on the left. All right, we can get out of here. As soon as he is gone, okay, I think we're good. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn our lights on. Taxi lights, we're going to have a quick last check. Okay, so yaw dampers are on, all fuel pumps are active, we are on engine power, lights are set correctly, uh, engine starts are correct, lighting is set, pressurization is set, uh, APU and environmental controls are good, um, heat is on, trim air is on where it needs to be, seatbelts are on. Okay, I think we're good. Let's get out of here. For a long taxi now. I always think that's kind of interesting when you have um, when you have like an air <clears throat> an aircraft that is landing in one part of the um, landing or I guess taking taking off in one part of an airfield where it has to taxi the furthest possible place. So it's kind of kind of funny. I'm going to take it slow until we make our turn here, and then we'll kick on some speed. Because we got a ways to go. <laughs> That's what you get with Active Sky XP for weather. It changes every five minutes. Okay, let's kick on a little bit of speed now. Charlie at Bravo 4.
Thank God for rudder pedals. If you don't have rudder pedals, get rudder pedals. They're worth it. Okay, let's take a look here. 24. All right, we are going. Let's do the uh, taxi out here. Nice view of the wing and the engine. But I can see we're getting off the line. 26. We're going to slow down just a little bit. All the way to the end of the runway. Second one is Bravo One. Okay. Doesn't want to stay. Come on now. Okay, looks like we're doing all right now. I guess I could do Bravo. I don't have to do Bravo 1. More runway is better than not enough runway. It's like landing at John Wayne um, in <laughs> Southern California. It's auto brakes full, and uh, when you hit the ground, you, you brake. Probably the most ridiculous airport to land at um, in terms of, like with a jet, would be in, um, I think it's Honduras. Uh, the name of the city is Tegucigalpa, and it has like such a short runway. It's just ridiculous how short it is. And then at the end of the runway is like a, like a ditch with a road on it, so... Okay, let's see here. Okay, so we are going to break a little bit here. Okay, so I think we are good. Let's do some things here. Turn our taxi lights off. Turn our landing lights on. Everything else looks kind of good there. We're going to switch our TCAS now to traffic. We are going to put LNAV and VNAV on. We're going to hit flight path vector. I'm going to change the map here to the SID for Cowboy. Okay, so let's read the final note here. So, um, climb to a hitting of 259 to 2600. Then direct rebel, and then on track 190 cross roper between 5,900 and 7,000. Then on a um, 152 track to cross Caesar at or above 8. And then on the track of 9 to cross hit me above 11,000. And then direct to cowboy. So, easy. Okay. So I think that's good. Alright, so we're good now. So the only thing we have to do now is turn the clock on. Turn the parking brake off. Power up, and then hit Toga, and then put the soundtrack on. And we are good. Airspeed's alive. Rotate.
gear. Radar contact. Flaps. Center engine fuel. Or center fuel tank, I mean. <laughs> and we'll turn auto brakes and then we'll put the gear to off. Oh, didn't mean to do that. All right. And left turn, join the departure. Looks like we're doing good. Thousand ago. Level it out. Come on now. Yes, I'm aware. That's why I'm waiting until I cross Roper. And we've crossed Roper. Excellent. Okay, cross Caesar at or above 8. So we're going to go to 19, because that's our next altitude. As the diamond yells at me. Okay, I'm going to put on uh, Command A now, and I'm going to recycle VNAV, and then that should be good. There we go. Caesar about at or above eight. And we're climbing now. Good. Let's take a look uh, while that's doing that outside. Departing Las Vegas. Although we will be back. We do like Las Vegas. Let's take a look from the wing view here. There we go. Nice. I love this view. It's so cool. And it's nice because the the way the like frame of the air uh, airframe is designed, like it muffles a lot of the engine sound. So I have the engines turned down as well, but it's not like super loud because if you've ever been on an aircraft, if you're sitting right next to the engine, it is louder. So nice. Let's take a look now where we're at. Probably above 10 now. Yeah, we're at 12. So I'm going to turn off our landing lights, which you would do at 10,000. And engines to auto. And we are going to turn off our seatbelts. Switch to 40. And switch this to... 80. Looking good. Okay, so uh, 19,000 was the top altitude for this. 
Hit me is there. We need to cross hit me at 11, which we've done. Cowboy, uh, and then from there we just kind of do our thing. Okay, so. Looking good. Las Vegas from the captain's window. Nice. Okay, so we're coming up to 19,000. So I'm going to go direct to... Uh, direct to 29 is what I meant to do there. Looking good. Nice. Standard altitude. Okay. So with that uh, standard altitude is transition altitude in... Um, <coughs> I don't know if it's specifically North America, but it is the United States. It's where um, you change your pressurization setting, and so um, that's why the, the thing popped up in yellow and said standard, uh, standard altitude. So that's why we have to click that. If we don't do that, we also die of hypoxia. So there's, you know, a very important need to do it. When I had set the altimeter uh, earlier, that's, the, uh, that's what you used before, obviously, the pressurization, and then when you're switching back in terms of your descent, you're also going to use um, the uh, altimeter when you reach 18,000. So at 18,000, whether ascending or descending, you switch it. So, And now that that's doing that, I'm going to switch over to Phoenix in terms of my uh, information. Altimeter, 30 degrees Celsius in Phoenix. Man, I wish. What's the temperature in Edmonton today? Let's see. Eight degrees. Really? It's that warm? But when I look at the forecast, it says snow, snow, snow. Well, that's Canada. <laughs> Alrighty then, let's take a look here. So the chart says, so we're coming up to Cowboy, and then, uh, does it say, from Cowboy on transition, maintain 19,000 uh, expect fall altitude. Okay. Didn't do that, but alright. Looking good. Light wind today, which is nice, because normally it's it's like super windy. And uh, I'm not a big fan of crosswind landings, because crosswind landings are really hard. Even on the ILS, they're hard. Let's see here. Uh, so our time to top of climb was, uh, da, 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 da. well, we're really close to top of climb, but 27, and then it's probably going to be 30 minutes or so to our top of descent, so, all right. Do some uh, scenery looking once we get to uh, transition on our altitude from 29 to 35, and then we'll take a look and put some put some tunes on. Uh, while I'm at it, I guess I should check my fuel. How are we doing here? 4830, 4820. Uh, super close. You can be within 100 pounds, but uh, I always like to have it really close, so I'm just going to turn on the crossfeed for just a sec. Give it a sec to catch. Okay, 
Looks like we're doing good now. Crossfeed off. 26,000. Hits 27, I'll change the altitude then. <laughs> when the plane's doing this <laughs> with the wind, it's like riding a gondola. All right, let's change it to 35,000. Excellent. Okay. Switch that over to 80, and then switch this one to 60. We take a look upstairs and see how everything's doing. That looks good. Okay. All right, so let me put some music on. We'll take some pictures outside. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to wait until we hit top of climb, just because I want to see what our, how much time we have until we get to our um, transition to descent. Okay, KPHX. Um, bruiser. Okay, so at tenths, so our... Our first altitude is uh, pant, uh, right after tenths, and that is two. Uh, we have to be holding at 29,000. So I'm going to write that down. At tenths. Okay, we are about to cross, oh, we're going to be, oh, it's not even going to be that long. It's going to be super quick, because I can see on the nav display here, top of climb, and then it's it's 80, just over 80 nautical. So, yeah, it'll probably be, if I had to guess, I'd say maybe 10 minutes where we're going to be at cruise. So, I prefer doing shorter flights, because you get to do more stuff in, in a shorter amount of time, your workload increases. If you do a longer flight, there's nothing wrong with it, but when you get up to cruise, you're you're literally just sitting here waiting for the computer to tell you to do things or, or waiting for stuff to happen. I did a transatlantic flight one time from JFK to London Heathrow, and it was going to be a seven-hour flight where I was at cruise for seven hours, so there's nothing for me to do. <laughs> so we had a family barbecue that night. I took off uh, from JFK, got up to cruise, set a timer for six hours and six and a half hours. And then I just came back at the end of the six and a half hours once the barbecue was over and uh, we we're good because <laughs> there's, there's really nothing to do when you're at cruise. You're just monitoring. Let's take a look here. Okay. So on our co-pilot FMC here, I have it set to uh, progress so that I can see uh, exactly how much time and how far we are from things. So where it says uh, KPHX 2 T slash C, that's basically, um, <clears throat> you know, how long until our top of climb? Well, it's seven nautical miles. Now six, uh, I want to see that when it says top of descent so that I know... Um, how long we have and we are are we above 30 now we are okay we're going to switch to 10 degrees for our bank angle should have done that earlier but that's okay And the wind's not super bad. There are times when the wind speed will be like super ridiculous and you'll have to increase your engine power to, to get across top of climb. Otherwise, you'll just chase it. You'll just be like chasing it. That's good. That means we're just about a cruise. Where it says top of climb on the progress uh, one on the, on the, um, the right one, it'll basically stay at... Uh, one, which it's 
no, it's not doing that. It'll like hold at one, and the forces will be just enough that you can't go fast enough, and so you're you're stuck there. Is it gonna do it now? No, it didn't. 72 nautical. Okay, so we are expecting to hit top of descent at 2202 hours, and it's currently 2100. So we have 10 minutes. So, given that we have a headwind, I'm going to set a timer for 8 minutes. Just so we know where we're at. And I'm going to put some music on, and we're going to take some uh, views outside. <laughs> as the camera is shaking because of the wind. There we go. Nice. All right. Thank you, No Copyright Sounds, for providing free music to use. <laughs> I did try to do ortho, uh, I spent quite a lot of time trying to do ortho 4xp, which is like a, it's like a free scenery that you can use, and, uh, it was just a problem, like, it was, the layering was, was a problem, and the, uh, it, it caused so much, like, stuff to load that I would just literally be stuttering through the air and be like, uh, 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 uh. so, I used the default one. What do I have it for? Left wing back, right wing engine. Let me try that one. Uh, left fling. Nice, there we go, there's the other one. Wing flex. <laughs> and this is exactly why I like to do shorter flights, because when you're at cruise, you're literally just waiting for stuff to happen. So my uh, flight and buddy Cody is always like, yeah, we're going to do like a four hour flight. And I'm like, OK, but I'm going to go vacuum once I hit cruise or I'm going to go do something because there's sitting here watching, you know, the sim do nothing, which is, I guess, does that make me a lazy pilot? It probably does. But pilots are lazy once they get to cruise. So. Have they started cabin service yet? Where's the beer? I should see if Valentin's uh, music is copyright or not, because that'd be great to use. He's got endless amounts of good music. I will post um, on my panels, I'll list um, the a lot of the songs I use from uh, NCS, which are really good ones, so. got windy all of a sudden. <laughs> Are we doing three minutes? Okay. Oh, I love this song.
Okay. See how we're doing now. 33 from top of descent. Twenty one fifty eight, still twenty one oh two. Okay. Below twenty nine twenty four. Not oh, easy to do. Looks nice. I'll do a, a one outside to just kind of like, even though it's shaking. Even though the camera is shaking sometimes, it's worth having like a realistic weather engine because it makes it all really, really realistic. When I first started flying, I didn't know how like the weather worked, and so I turned the uh, I turned the weather off, and I was like, I don't know why you're having trouble landing, Cody. I'm not. How are we doing? One minute. Okay. So I guess what we'll do now is we will prepare for uh, for arrival. Let's see here. Okay, so we're gonna go to. Uh, our FMC and go to init ref and we're going to select our approach. I guess I should, how much time do we have? 16 nautical. Okay. Really quickly I'm going to check to make sure that they're still landing. And they're still landing runway 8. So that's good. Okay, so we go to the InterRef page here on the FMC, and we're going to select uh, our flaps 40. Our course is going to be 080, so we're going to change this uh, real quick. We are going to change, actually, we're going to change our altitude real quick before we lose, uh, before we get that. 080 is going to be our approach course. Okay, so uh, what we're doing here essentially is we have uh, configured our approach to be uh, for runway 08. We've set our course heading, which is good. Uh, ILS triple one and then seven five. We'll put that in now. Okay, that's good to go. So essentially, we're we're kind of good to go now. We just need to. Uh, Wait to descend. What will happen is when we cross over top of descent, it's going to start to to bring us in. So, for right now, we don't really need to do anything uh, other than just monitor the uh, the approach chart. And I, I forgot that there's um you can integrate in the Zebo tablet here. Uh, you can integrate uh, with AviTab like the charts and stuff here. And so I'm gonna do that so that you can see the charts that I'm looking at because I have them on my other computer here but it's it's also cool to see them and then understand them so okay so we're descending now so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to kick on some speed break so we don't over speed let me bring up that chart again Okay, so distance to pant is, how far are we from pant? 11 nautical miles. 
Okay. We only have to get to 29 though, so we'll be we'll be fine. Uh, I am going to preset the altimeter though. Two nine or nine or eight is our altimeter. Okay, how we doing here? Good. So we are six nautical. We're coming up to thirty, which is fine. Uh, I'm going to set this to twenty four so that it just continues with the descent. And uh, how we doing here? Three nine eight zero. Okay, I'm gonna change the cross feeds just a little bit here. Descending, so we're gonna ask you to put your seat belts on. We're below twenty nine here, so we are gonna take our. Uh, we're gonna change our bank angle back to thirty. Okay, so pant we have to be above 29, which we're going to make the um, we're going to make that altitude restriction no problem. We need to be at duty. We need to be between 29 and uh, 29 and 24. Duty is 18. So is it not changing over? It's kind of weird. Hello. Is it thinking about it? Recycle VNAV maybe? See if that does it. It's doing it, but it's doing it really slow. I figured it'd be more than that. Um, uh, okay. I don't know why it's not doing the vertical speed we want, so we'll just do it ourselves. And then we're going to change this to 280. And then at Mayor, oh, we have 25 between Duty and Mayor, so we need to be 19, which is only 5,000, so that's an easy waypoint. Yeah, these altitude restrictions, I'm not worried about at all. They're pretty, pretty straightforward to make. Okay, so we need to be above 24. We're at five, so I'm gonna slow down the vertical speed just a little bit. <clears throat> Cross feed's probably fine now, so I'll turn that off. Let's see here, okay. Uh, at duty, and then we wanna be 19 next. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and see if it will pick up on VNAV again. thousand so it looks like it's doing what it's supposed to do which is kind of it's it's kind of buggy slash weird sometimes it does that but um we have we have you know 26 nautical miles to get uh to mayor so we're we're fine to not do a radical descent so i wonder if i have a distance 
converter. I have a converter application on my phone, but I don't know if I have a distance one on here. Oh yeah, okay, so... <laughs> a nautical mile to a light year. One point eight. Yeah, so we got like forty six kilometers to, to reach that, so that's probably why it's taken it slow. So when we were doing the uh, the the routing and stuff like this earlier uh, in our pre flight, uh, we ran into kind of a weird waypoint thing. So what we're going to do is when we get to PGSKN is I'm just going to vector uh, the aircraft to the west uh, and then what will happen is when we are parallel to uh, ALIS or ALLIS however the heck you want to say that um, I'll basically make a reciprocal course turn and then we'll capture that and enter the enter the ILS uh, established on the ILS and we'll be good. Okay, so we have 12 nautical, and 22, so we have to go, yeah, like, it's really weird that it's it's going slow, but I mean, we need to be between it, right? Above 19, below 25, so it's, we're not doing anything wrong, I just like to hit, you know, altitude restrictions that I'm supposed to, so that I'm not having to make up time through uh, an expedited descent. Turn this down. 21, and we need to be at 19. So another 2,000. We have nine nautical miles. Uh, yeah, I'll just leave that. We'll be fine. And then Bruiser is 250. Now at Mayer, it says we need to be at 270 knots. Um, so what we're going to do. put the speed on and we're going to go to 270 and we're going to set this back to 13 because that's the next one we need to be at and our vertical speed will set to like 1700 which is fine Okay, so we are three from Mayer, and we are at twenty thousand five hundred. Yeah, so we're doing, we're doing fine. Doing fine. Okay, well that's doing that. I'm gonna check one thing. No, nope, we're still good that way. Okay. 2989. Okay. Doing fine. And we're at 19, and we crossed it right on the mark. Primo. Okay. Holding it 27 for the speed, so that's good. Okay, so at Bruiser, we need to be at 13, and then. We also need to be at uh, 250 knots. Looking at the chart here, I think I know what the issue is. Is in the um, in the star chart for Phoenix? Oh, standard altitude. My bad. There we go. Um, how far are we? 15. Okay, we're going to increase this to 2,000. And we're going to slow this down as well. To 250. Um, so, 
in in the chart itself, and if I if I had the Ab Abby tab thing set up, I could show this to you. So I'll have that for for a future flight. Essentially, though, in the approach, um, it shows that after the waypoint of uh, Tillman, you then go to your transitions for runways seven uh, or eight, and um, Jamil, which would be the one that we were going to use for our our approach, is in the is in the approach pathway for um, for runway zero eight. So based on I guess what that looks like, and I, I didn't consider this at the start. I guess you could just enter the glide slope at Jamil, which would be four thousand. Um, but if if there's an issue or something like that, you don't have a lot of time before you reach the runway, so you may have to do a go around. So in this instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the downwind so that we do the full uh, the full approach. So like I said, when we get to pigskin, I'm going to vector the aircraft west, and then when we're parallel, we'll do a reciprocal course. So, okay. How are we doing here? Okay, so bruiser, and then Bowell, we need to be above 9, but below 12. Okay. Above 9. Okay. We're doing on outside. Let's see here. Looking good. I know there are mountains like around Phoenix, but I recall Phoenix being a lot like or Arizona around Phoenix being a lot more flat. Okay, so we are coming up to Bruiser and we want to be at nine. Uh, Bruiser 250, so we hold our, uh, our speed until uh, NC and then we change it. Check the altimeter one more time. Still two nine or nine or eight. Oh, we're holding it that we want to be below it. Uh, vertical speed. Two thousand, please. Now this is obviously going to increase speed on the airframe, but that should it should level it off in just a sec. Uh, above nine, we need to be at uh, Beadwell. We're at seven now. Yeah, we'll be fine. We're below twelve. Well, I guess we missed that waypoint because we're supposed to be below twelve, but that's okay. So, Based on where the wind is coming from, it looks like we're going to have a tailwind upon landing, so that's good. Okay, so we are four from Bidwell, and then we need to be no higher than 8,000 for NC. How far are we between Bidwell and NC? 9.7? Okay. Take a look at that approach real quick. Pig skin and then vector off. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is um, basically when I get to pig skin, I'm going to turn to the right. Bidwell. So we want to be above eight. So we're just going down one more. So we're going to slow that descent down because we don't have to go that far. NC, we are at nine. Okay, we're still on vertical speed mode and we're going to slow our speed down. 
ordinarily if we were on uh, ordinarily if we were on LNAV VNAV, it would do a decel for us. Um, and I can actually see one on the on the nav display, but because I'm doing it manually, I want to just make sure it's it's below. Okay, so NC above 8, 7, and then holding at 6. Uh, I guess I should look at the approach to determine what altitude we join the glide slope. Okay, so... Initial approach fix at 6,000. 078 track. Cape. 078 is the final approach course, and we join the... Glide slope at 6,000. Okay. Okay, how we doing now? Coming up to NC. 4.3, and we want to be above 8, which we are, so we're going to go down to uh, 7 in just a second here. And then at, uh, at football be at 210 and then we hold at 210 until we join the glide slope so that's good so much of, of of flying is just doing what the chart says for you to do and for making sure that you're in control and of your aircraft and uh, as Josh Flowers would say you always want to stay ahead of the aircraft so the more you can get done before without circumventing approaches or things like that the better because it's less of the workload because when you're coming in on your final approach that's when you have an intense workload that you need to you need to manage so and see okay so down to seven and the distance between the two is 4.2 so we're going to slow down to 210 and as soon as that okay so we can go now so vertical speed want to make that 1500 because we do want to be down and then for pigskin we're gonna be at six so I'm staying on the track okay so 180 is the track okay um, so then that would be Two, that's what I thought. Okay, so 180 plus 90, 270. But I was going to have it go down a bit, so it's going to be a 265 as I wrote down. Okay, so football, and then we want to be at pigskin. We want to be at 6,000. Vertical speed, 7,000. Okay. thousand to go okay so from here we are going to transition to the approach we're doing runway 8 left a vent uh, to helix I guess I could do it to, to SART. I could join it at SART too. That's that's fine. Okay, so we are now on a vector and we're gonna go heading select. No, 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 no. We're gonna go heading select is what we're gonna do. I don't know why it keeps doing that. I have to keep cross feeding the engines. Okay, we're gonna go speed brake armed so what you can see here essentially is we're gonna do we're basically going parallel to the approach and then we're gonna we're gonna turn so yeah I'm gonna join it at uh, join it at SART I think actually you know what I'll do I'll make it like that so that it makes it easier to join to join it at SART yeah there we go so to join it at SART, we need to be at 6,000, and then we need to be at 5,000 for uh, Ilike, as Ilike is the um, 
is the radar fix to join the, the glide slope, so. Oh, you know what? I'm such an idiot. I totally forgot. Landing lights and uh, engines to continuous. My bad. Okay, so how are we doing here? So essentially when we get to just past SART, I'm going to uh, go direct SART, and then what will happen is we'll, we'll join the arrival. Other than that, though, we're doing okay. Looking good, looking good. All right. See where we're at. Okay. Six thousand at or above. I'll set the track heading to seven eight because that's what it said. And when we make our turn, I'm going to slow down as well to. Uh, to 200. Oh, are we coming up on some hills, some mountains? want to be a little bit past uh, SART because I don't want to be, I don't want to just turn and then miss it. So we're just about there. You know what I'll do actually, rather than just go that, I'll do this. Help the, uh, help the aircraft. And now I'm going to go direct SART. And we're going to put VNAV LNAV on. And we're going to set our heading as well to 078. And we are going to put our glide slopes on. We're going to turn NAV 1 on, NAV 2 on. And we are going to uh, slow down. Okay, start. And then we're also going to, now yeah, we're going to leave it at 6,000. That's fine. Okay, we're going to set auto brakes to that. Um, Start is five. How are we doing here? Six thousand at or above, and then five thousand at or above. So if I split the difference and go fifty-five hundred, it'll probably be no problem here. Okay, so we're gonna go. Start. Okay. So if I actually if I bring the map up here. You can see what we kind of did there. Instead of coming out, um, you know, right kind of in the middle of the approach path, we're kind of vectoring ourselves around. So, and 
and then we just bring it in and we're good. And VOR lock. Is it going to do it? Okay, we are going to go to D500 vertical speed. I want that to go down quickly. 5,000 at or above. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to join it at 5 is what it says. Okay, so I'm going to go back to LNAV VNAV. And we're going to go VOR lock. speed is way too fast. I don't know why it does that. Come on, VOR lock. No, okay. Actually, if I just hit approach now, I was trying to get it to go down there, but it's doing it. Damn it. Did it do it? VOR lock. Come on now. Set at or above five. Okay, there we go. Now we go. VOR lock. Uh, and the diamond's moving. Okay, approach, single channel. And this should do its thing real quick. Eight nautical miles to the airfield. Come on. Are we going to descend here? Hello? There we go. Okay, let's slow down now. I'm going to go flaps one. Okay, I think we're good now. Yeah, we've, we've captured it. It was kind of a little wonky there because I kind of bounced in between it. So, okay, let's, let's slow this down now. Okay, so overhead panel, I'm going to start the APU, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. APU is going to start, we have our seatbelt sign on, everything else up here looks good. ILS is captured, we just need to slow the heck down now. Um, we're going to go gear down, flaps down again, auto brakes are set, uh, speed is doing okay. Speed brake is armed, so I think we're good now. We just need to slow down. Uh, gear is down and locked, three green. ILS is captured. And we are coming in. So we're good. I'm gonna switch to the runway chart. Okay, we are good. Let's put on some more flaps, put on a little bit of music now. And how we doing here? Flaps again. Is that I gotta be too far away, I guess. Because the runways look kinda weird. <laughs> One five zero, which we're doing good. If we go to init ref now. 139 was our final one, so we're going to go 145, flaps down again. Holding at 145, 
Lapse down again. I'll increase that just a little bit for a sec. And we're coming in. That's not really a good angle, I guess. <laughs> How we doing here? Okay, I'm going to take over the aircraft now. So, uh, final flaps, disengage, auto throttle disengage, my aircraft. And we're good. Okay, we're coming into Phoenix. I guess what I can do actually is for one second here, I'm going to just turn that off so it doesn't keep beeping at us. Okay, I think we're good. says we're a little high right now but we'll we'll catch that in a minute so And we are coming into Phoenix. Reverses out, nose down, speed brake extend, reverses are out, and we are slowing down. We're good. I had to put the reverses out for a sec, so that's why I'm not in the middle there. Cancel reversers. Okay. Can we make the high speed here? We'll make the next one, actually. Oop, didn't mean to do that. Flaps coming up. Speed brakes going down. Clear of runway zero eight. Okay, I'm gonna do that there. Okay, we made it to Phoenix. We are good. So real quick here, uh, we are at Bravo eight. So we're going to take uh, Bravo 8, so Bravo to Charlie 10. Bravo to Charlie 10. Back to that view. I just wanted to turn my uh, turn my uh, lights. All right, Charlie Ten looks good. Oh. 
What is that right there? Charlie. Charlie 9. Yeah, so we're coming up to Charlie 10 then. Okay, we're good. Turn the auto brakes off. APU is ready to go. We'll turn the cross feeds off. I think this was Charlie 9. I just looked at it. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go one more. This is the uh, this is the free scenery from Mr. X. I think it's Mr. X for Phoenix, and uh, it's it's fantastic. It's really good, really good. All right, let's turn in here. Oh, you know what? Hell with it. We'll go right here. Because we can. Because we can. Even though U.S. Airways is probably like, why are you parking here? Because I can. Okay, we're going to go ahead and turn the lights off. I'm going to kill the soundtrack now. Uh, okay. And the marshaller says that we're good. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, let's get the APU turned on here. APU is on. APU bleed is on. Seatbelt's off. We're going to turn the probe heat, off, probe, probe heat off. And we're going to do the engine cutoffs now. Gates coming across. Excellent. Very good, very good. Okay, turn those off. That engine's off. We're going to go ahead and switch engine one now. Oop, my bad. Cut off is what I meant to do. They were already at idle. And that one's powering down. Good. Engine is just about off. Cool. All right. N2 value zero. All right. Okay. Let's go ahead and get some, get the door open here. Turn a couple of things off. Uh, we are going to turn trim air off. That we can turn off. Uh, any collision light. We still have the APU running, so we should probably leave that on for a sec. Go ahead and turn that off. Turn our TCAS to off. Uh, radio, we don't need to do anything with. That's fine. We'll turn this stuff off, though. Light directors off. Flaps are down already. That's fine. Uh, that's already at cutoff. We already turned that off, so that's fine. Go back to here, and we'll turn we'll turn the ground power on now, I guess. So, ground services connect PU, and turn that off, and then turn the APU off. Gotta let for the gotta wait for the APU bleed to uh, turn off again. 
But it was a good flight. wasn't uh, wasn't too bad. APU lead. So that's the Zebo mod for uh, X Plane 11. If you don't have the Zebo mod, I strongly encourage you to get it. It's an amazing, an amazing aircraft, and it's updated all the time by Zebo. You can get it uh, by going to xplane.org and just typing in Zebo, Z I B O, and it will come up, and uh, there'll be a download link on the first locked comment and it's to his Google Drive and you can download it. If you do decide to download it and it gives you a message saying uh, exceeded download uh, and you can't, basically all you have to do is just uh, right click on the file and make a copy uh, to your uh, Google Drive and then you can download it. I also have um, in my tutorials uh, for the 737-800 my tutorials playlist on my YouTube channel um, there is a uh, there are tutorials for Zebo in terms of downloading it, setting it up, configuring it, installing it, learning how to fly the fundamentals, setting your camera angles. Um, I have a start to finish checklist playlist for the Zebo uh, 737 800 on my YouTube channel. APU is off. Okay, so we'll turn that off. Okay, so we can kind of finish the stuff that we want to do here. Anti collision light is off. Window heat we will turn off, trim air is already off, turn the packs to off, isolation valve to open, yaw dampers are already off, uh, we no longer need fuel so we'll turn the fuel pumps off, and then we'll turn the hydraulics off, everything else is done there, do we have everything done here, it looks like it, okay so we're going to go ahead and turn the power off to the aircraft. Uh, so. To off, emergency lights are armed, standby power to, oh, we'll turn this off, I guess, to off, and then battery off. So with that done, we are back to where we started, which was cold and dark. However, we're at Phoenix, and it's very nice today. Weather is very, very wonderful. <laughs> so that's... Uh, that's good. So essentially that was uh, Las Vegas to Phoenix using the Zebo mod, and I'm Blaine. Thanks for watching, and I will see you again soon.